We have a special word from Yahweh. All the way from St. Lucia, a young missionary who I believe is excited about Yahweh's work. Please stand and receive our guest speaker, Brother Bradley Joseph. Hallelujah. Receive him with a round of applause.
invite you into this place and the foolish. We pray that you come against every spirit that is not of God which is in this place. The spirit of hypocrisy, the spirit of gossip, we come against you in the name of Yahshua. That is you. We command you to go because this place doesn't belong to you. Stay home when you are able to come here 
Which Yahweh? Yeah, well, we the children of Almighty Yahweh. Yeah, you say who? Maybe because you have some misunderstanding. But I'll tell you something. The tongue met the teeth, met the tongue in the mouth. And it still bites the tongue. And the tongue still try playing it if you eat and you have bits of food in your tongue. So there will always be misunderstanding. And whenever the Bible says something and you go against it, it is a sin. Let's not take that for a joke because Hebrews 10 25 says, Not forsaking the assemblies of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one and other, and so much the more as ye see the day of worship. Forsake them out. Yeah. The assemblies of ourselves. If you forsake the assembly of yourself, I am certain you are committing a sin. I encourage everyone to always make it their duty to be at service every single day that this place of service. Let's make, our, let's make it our responsibility to be at service that we will always be there with us no matter what we are going through. Let us always be at service and staying at home makes nothing better for you only give the enemy the opportunity to destroy you more. Right. If you think you will use that scripture and say where two or three or more are gathered, then the blessing shall be. There is another scripture that says Yahweh doesn't like division. Come on. So you have to be in the general gathering. Let's be yeah. together and worship with each other no matter what. Let nothing prevent you from coming to service. Let nothing come between you and Yahweh. I see Deacon Stephen, he has from the day I met him, he told me he has a bad day, and I see Deacon Stephen jump in. He's going jump in. Yeah, yeah, man. Deacon Stephen can jump. It's just that I wear a mask and I don't want to suffocate sometimes. I wear it easy. But the music going down. And I really love it. There is no other place to be than to be here. Yahweh, thanks and praise. But it is youth month. It's a revival for the youth. And we have to celebrate the youth. Yeah. It is clear that the youth, the young people, are very important in the work of Yahweh. Very important in the worship and service of Yahweh. Many scriptures in the Bible shows how important the youth, the children are, and Yahweh loves. In Mark chapter 10 verse 3 says, And they brought children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those carrying them, and Yahshua saw it and was offended. He said to them, Allow the children to come to me, and do not hinder them. For because of those who are as these, the kingdom of Yahweh is. This is strong. This is strong and that has to pass. This scripture has to pass. For because of those who are as these as the children, the kingdom of Yahweh exists. So we need to be careful. Like we read in the last part, we just mentioned the last part of it, the kingdom of Yahweh exists as a result of people that are humble like children. And in Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, the pops. Back, he said, and he said, truly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as a little child, not at all can you enter the kingdom of Yahweh. You can never enter the kingdom of Yahweh if you don't humble yourself as a child. Children are very important in the things of Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. I see many youth, many young people. Yes. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. So we'd like to talk to the children now. There is a time for everything. Yes. And this time is the time for Yahweh to be at his fullest in your life. True. This time is the time for Yahweh to be at full effect in your life. True. This is a time to prove Yahweh to the world. And it's not just now. 
but all the days of your life. As some people, we have to give the devil no chance in our lives. The good book says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1, Remember now your creator in the days of your youth, while the evil days do not come, or the years strike when you shall say, I have no pleasure in them. Remember the Creator in the days of your youth. Yeah. It's going to be on some serial. I'm not that good. Mm -hmm. It goes to every one of us. Remember Heavenly Father. You are not too young to die. Can death can come at any time. Do not say you will repent later. Later is not a promise. Tomorrow is not a promise. A second or split of a second later is not a promise to you. So if you hear his voice, harden not your heart and don't take any chance to sin or take a pause on your relationship with Yahweh. Both young and old will die. Both young and old. So don't feel because your mother reach 60 or 70 years who believe you will reach 70 years. I am certain that you know a lot of young people that died when you watch television, you will listen to the death announcement. I am certain that you will hear 16 years, 17 years, 18 years, five years, a few months old, they die. Don't think you're too special for your love that. Uh -uh. And it comes like a thief in the night. You do not know when that thing will come. I cannot tell you how death is. I've never been there. I'm not too interested in it either. I don't want to go there. I want to be translated, transformed, in the twinkling of an eye when the cloud goes up. I don't know, but that Yahweh's will be done. Yahweh's will be done. <laughs> so, 20 years later is not a promise. Five minutes later is not a promise. We have to do it now. We have to give Yahweh our all right now because we do not want Him to catch us with our pants down. It will be a sad day. Right. It will be trouble right. on our lives. We cannot take the chances. So every young person inside of here today, keep in mind that you can die. You can die, I can die, but I don't want to die. Yeah. We all can die, and we have to be prepared. Yeah. Let us not say we will get ready. Let us say we are ready. And we have to make certain decisions in our life. Yes. We have to be sinless, brethren, because yes. there is life after death. Yes. And after death, you cannot make any changes. No. But if you plant young, you are going to get young. If you plant peanuts, you will get peanuts. Yes. Whatever you do, you will reap the consequences of the action. Let us not believe our parents are praying for us, they will cover us. You work your own salvation with fear and strength. Salvation is an individual thing, and don't think because I pray for you, it will be well with you. But come on. I can pray for you and you do it what you want. I cannot confess your sins on your behalf. No. You have to do that. So, Romans 6 says, Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Brethren, young people, we are not ours. We don't belong to ourselves. We don't own our own selves. We belong to you. Let us use our bodies and everything that we have, our inner being, everything. Tutbaga, they say in Korean. Tutbaga, everything we have. 
to give Yahweh praise, to magnify Him, and for us to enter the kingdom. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20 confirms the fact. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you? Which you have from Yahweh? And you are not your own. For you were brought with a price. Glorify Yahweh therefore with your body. If you purchase a shoes, doesn't it belong to you? The shoes belong to you. If you possess that microphone, that microphone belongs to you. You are bought with a price. So you don't belong to yourself. But you belong to Yahweh. Don't pay. We can do what we want. And it will go just like that. No way. We belong to Yahweh. And we have to obey what he says. Let us use this temple to give Yahweh praise. Let us use it as a service. And yes, sin tastes sweet in the flesh, but I will advise you, never take a chance to sin, because sin is, you will get addicted to sin. When you want to let go, you cannot let go. And Yahshua might come back, a cloud burst, a trumpet sound, and then, too late for you. There is a sin that I don't like to touch on, but the scriptures of Reb Hash, the scriptures don't like it. The scriptures don't like it, and it's not the only sin. I'm not trying to punish it, but it's not the only sin. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18, three fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is within the body, but he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. I did not say it. The scripture said it. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against the body. We should be very careful with the sin as young people. We should never take the chance. This is dangerous. And if you are in that sin, say, Bradley Joseph, tell you, get out. This is trouble. This sin is trouble. He has to take the powers of Yahweh to take you out of the sin. Temptation is there, young people. Temptation is there because every day I say I'm not eating late. And my neighbor will always say, why do you late? Nine o'clock. I cannot resist it. The food is good. Trust me, my neighbor has me going against my will. But I say, I didn't know it. Temptation is there. But Yahweh will not let you be tainted beyond what you can overcome. Let us show Satan that we are on the winning side. Because he knows that his time is short and he wants us to be burning with him. He's yeah. jealous of us. Yeah. And we need to keep that in mind. Yeah. Fornication causes death. Yeah. Fornication brings sickness. Yeah. Fornication opens your body to all kinds of evil spirits. Yeah. And we yeah. need to be careful. Pray. Fast and pray. And ask Yahweh to give you strength in my flesh. Oh, yeah. And I am certain, I can tell. Yahweh will take care of you. Do not be afraid when temptation comes from people. Go to Yahweh. Say, Father, I need you. Call on him. He will always be there to answer you once you are alive. Never take the chance to commit anything, not just communication. Do not gossip, do not lie, do not steal, do not be envious. Every sin can cost you your salvation. It's not just one. Every one of them can cost you your salvation. Sin is wicked. 
sin only destroys us, put a distance, put a gap between us and our heavenly Father. Young people, let us unite in saying, in staying on the right path. Let us unite with each other. Be our brother's keeper. Let us hold each other's hand and tell them why I am not going to sow this corn. Not because you are not feeling right with the pastor that you stay home. Mm -mm. When Yahweh asks you why didn't you come, you cannot say it's because of Bradley. You need trouble. Trust me. You need trouble. Don't let me prevent you from receiving your salvation. Don't let me prevent you from coming to worship Almighty Yahweh. Let us be very careful. Let us be careful. Let us hold each other's hand and help each other grow stronger because our life is not a playground, but it's a battleground and a war is on. Sister Thompson preached the armor last week, which was a very powerful message. Praise Yahweh, he made provision for us that we overcome, but we have to apply ourselves, apply everything to it. But let us not be ashamed. Let us not be ashamed of Yahweh as young people. Let us not be ashamed to call upon him. No matter what sin it is, let us not continue and let us not think because people have not seen us or said anything to us to think it's okay. Keep in mind that Yahweh sees and he knows everything. Darkness is like light unto Yahweh. He's, Yahweh lies down but he doesn't see. His eyes may be closed. His ears are wide open. He meditates. He imagines. So let's not think Yahweh knows. Yahweh doesn't know. He knows. Don't believe Yahweh don't know what you're doing. He knows. So today is the day to make up our minds. To make this decision. And say we are coming home to Yahweh. Let us make the decision today and say we are not going to sin anymore. Death comes at any time. And we do not know what time death will come. It will be a sad day for you when that cloud bursts and Yahshua comes down with the son of the archangel. It will be a sad day for you. There will be no place to shelter. So let us be transformed. Let us be transformed, let us kill the flesh. Yeah. And Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 said, I beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the mercies of Yahweh, that ye present your bodies yeah. a living yeah. sacrifice, yeah. holy, yeah. acceptable unto Yahweh, which is your reasonable service. So your body being a living sacrifice for its own is like your reasonable service. That's like the believe Yahweh sacrifice, sacrifice your body unto Yahweh. And be not conformed to this world. Don't be entangled in the things of the world. Christmas coming. You might be at work, exchange of gifts. Tell them you are taking part in that. That's not part of your religion. A school, the teachers who want the children to take part in the exchange of evil. That is not for us. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will. Of Yahweh. Remember, he said, Be ye perfect as the heavenly Father is perfect. Let's go to be perfect. Let us be living sacrifices. Let us heal that flesh. Let us reject sin and its fullness. Let us reject pleasures of this world and not be entangled in its activities. Look for examples. 
house parties, maybe, you know, I used to love house parties. Love us, but, but you need to be careful because what's going on in these places are not for us as children of Yahweh. Yeah. So we have to put our feet down. Put our feet down yeah. and say, No, we are not going to participate in the things of Yahweh. But the bad boy has Satan comes. The young people. Satan comes in all kinds of ways. He knows what you like and what you do not like. And 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 says, And no matter, for Satan himself transforms into an angel of light. Be vigilant, young people. You have two sides good and evil. Righteousness and unrighteousness. What do you want? You have the promised land, new Jerusalem coming now, or you build it. What do you want? And today, whatever you do will be tell you where you go. Every second that you leave, whatever you do, it determines where you go. At the end, the devil does disguise himself, and that's why we need to keep our eyes open. Study. If we do not study, we cannot know the difference between good and evil. We, as children, write the Bible, please. Put up your Bible. You know, at the back is saying, "Put up your hand. Put up your hand." The assembly guys say, "Put up the Bible." We should come to service of our Bibles, the phone batteries can die. And we will, you know, BTC and her life can shut down the internet on us at any time. And we can access the Bible. We need to walk with our Bibles. When we go to work, we go to work with everything that is needed at work. We walk with everything that is required. We are at work with love your salary. We don't want to lose our job. When we come to service, we come with an iPhone, we come to show we can access the Bible on our phone. We need to change these things, saints. We need to change these things because time is near. And not because from the day you were born, you heard that scripture say, He's coming, He's coming, He's coming. In Peter it says, one thousand years is like a day unto Yahweh. Yahweh will come when he's ready to come. And just for the elect's sake, he will shorten the days. Because things are bad. Things are really bad. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes. Study. But yes, study. But do not just be a reader and a hearer, but a doer of the word. Don't just be a reader just to say you know so much of the Bible and then you know it, but you don't put it in practice. We, as the children of Almighty Yahweh, we need to practice doing what is required to enter the kingdom. Keep in mind not talking to service is a sin. Keep that in mind. We might take it lightly, we might just feel I go into service today. But it's a sin because the scripture says forsake not the assembly of thyself. And if you forsake the assembly of yourself, you go against the scripture and you commit a sin. Whatever the Bible says to do, and you don't do it, it is a sin. Whatever I say not to do and you do it, it is a sin. Moses chapter 4, the 6 said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Not just because they were not able to access knowledge, you know. because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. 
that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy Elohim, I will also forget thy children. So we see, we need to study. We need to make time to study the word of Yahweh. Because Satan presents himself as an angel of light. And he presents himself as an angel of light. He can catch anyone else. But if we know the difference between righteousness and unrighteousness, we know the difference between the will of Almighty Yahweh, we will not be tangled or trapped by Satan. Yes. When we study, we are able to see clearly the difference between righteousness and unrighteousness. We are able to make the right choices and detect Satan when he comes like an angel of light. Let us not reject knowledge, saints. Let us not perish because of lack of knowledge as a result of us rejecting knowledge. If we reject knowledge, we have no knowledge. And the scriptures say my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Let us not allow that to happen to us. James, or Jacob, says in chapter 4, verse 7, Therefore submit yourselves to Yahweh, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Let us put on the fight. Let us face him, and we are not going to give up. But let us put on the armor. Fight and prove to Satan that we are on the winning side. Yeah. Let us give Yahweh all our lives. Let us give him all. And be happy with Yahweh. Because there is a day coming. The repentance season will be over. The repentance season will be over. And you will be faced with your judgment. Every man will be judged. So right now is the time to let go of sin if you are in sin. This is the time to cancel every plan. Because you can sometimes be planning in advance to sin. This is the time to cancel every plan that you have to see. And do you know? Do you know? It is not just those that commit the sin that will take. You know that? In Romans chapter 1, verse 28 says, And even as they did not like to retain Yahweh in the knowledge, Yahweh gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, righteousness, full of envy. Murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of Yahweh, deceitful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, yes. without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, yes. implacable, yes. unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of Yahweh. That they which commit such things are worthy of death. But head on the path. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So in other translation other versions, it says, but also consent to them that practice them. So it's not only those that commit the sin that will pay. But if you consent to it, if you are enjoying a particular person that is sinning, you see a friend, a boyfriend and girlfriend, and they go in the hotel and sleep, and you say, boy, that boy, watch him, you are happy that he has so many girls. You enjoy that? You will pay. You will pay. You see your son or your daughter into unrighteousness and you don't make any difference? You don't advise them. You say, boy, that boy, you know, that boy, bring many girls at home here. We will pay. It's not just them alone. 
once you consent to the sin that they practice, you will suffer the consequences. And this will be on death. Death. But death. We must not take pleasure in sin of other people's sin because the scripture says whatever does, whoever does these sins is worthy of death. So if your child, your sister, your wife is into sin, husband is into sin, you need to set the boundaries that them you are not going to walk together. No. Iron is having left iron. So does the contentance of a man. You two men can walk together if they don't agree. We cannot be walking together with those that are in unrighteousness. It's most times easier for them to take you into unrighteousness than for you to take them inside. We need to be careful. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 says, Be ye not unequal with unbelievers, for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion have light with darkness? It's not just relationships, it's talking about things. Most times, um, when you see young people who will be having their little boyfriend and girlfriend, um, they still fell out there or don't have their the light, and the person is not in the assembly. He talks about that also. And then, they will tell them, Lord, you will be with unbelievers. But it's not just that. Whoever is in unrighteousness, not in company with that person. Not under any circumstances unless you are ministering to that person. We have to make up our minds now. Make up the right choice. There is no more time for games. No more time to give sin occasion in our lives. Yeah. So as young people, let us do what the book of Timothy said to us. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 4, verse 12 said, Let no one despise the youth, but become an example of the believer in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Let us allow no one to despise our youth. Give it all to God. And you know you live in righteous. You want to sing? Tell them you want to sing. Tell the pastor or whoever you want to sing. Don't be afraid. Yahweh requires that. For he's requesting that from you. Do not be afraid of asking anyone to allow you the opportunity to perform unto Almighty Yah. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 says, Now in the children, most times for young people to be on the right path, the parents are A decision, a certain decision. And Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, Show you a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So parents have their responsibility also. You can't just put pressure on children, children do this, children do that. And then you are at home, maybe you gossip it. Maybe you talk about the pastor at home. Come on. Maybe you talk about a brother or sister at home and the children. And what do you do? When they do gossip, they gossip. You cannot live your life anyhow and expect your children to be coming of the right way. Train the child in a way. And when you grow old, you don't depart from it. It's not just taking, no common use, better on and spoil the child alone. A lifestyle. Yes. Lifestyle. Children will learn fast when they have other cats. Whatever they do, whatever they see, they will do. You train them with your lifestyle also. Train the child the 
we that you should go. When he grew old, he will never depart from it. Oh no, you make the child and not the child's mind and heart. Children make a decision sometimes. If I ever be a bad boy, I am choosing. I am the only son of my mother and she was too strict. Too strict. That's why I I just can't see anybody eating a child. Too strict. But children also have something that they need to do. Exodus chapter 20 verse says, Honor your father and your mother. Don't forget that now. There you go. Don't forget that. So that's your days. <laughs> so that you may live long yes. in the land Yahweh of Elohim is. Honor your mother and your father. Praise Yahweh. Your mother and father are responsible for you. Honor them. Respect them. Give them what is due unto them. Let us not take a chance for us to see. Honor. The scripture says, Honor your mother and your father. You have to honor your father and your mother. And it has a promise in it. It has a promise in it. And your day. Maybe not. Maybe not. I love that. I love that. I wish my mother was alive. I would honor her because I don't believe long, at least 120 years. I want to live very long. Oh, yeah, yeah. Honor your father and your mother. Mm. But if I live for my family, I would prevent it. That's why before I go to bed, the last thing I do is pray. Just once. Pray for my family. 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 Young people. Let us make the right choices. Choose Yahweh. Yes. Let us live the life He has called us to live. Yes. Let us live the way the scripture says to live. And there is no such thing as I cannot. There is no such thing as I'm trying. I'm trying, but I cannot handle it anymore. Winners never quit. And quitters never win. Do not be a quitter. Let us hold on strong. Let us hold each other's hand and fight the battle. Let us keep on praying with and for each other. We need each other. We need each other. So in closing, I, 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 I don't think I should go too long because I think I might. I don't want to get you on so bored. So, the word is good. In closing, I will, I will share a short story with you. It was a little story about a big man who died. And when it's on the other side, on that day, it was agreed that whoever arrives must choose where they will go, whether it's in the promised one or whether it's in heaven. So this man was excited. He demanded to visit hell. And whoop, he got into something like a leaf. And it took him down to hell. When the doors were open, there were when the doors were open, things were glorious. The devil had no tail. The devil had no horns. He even met his friends. They were healthy, eating well, drinking well, making merry. Then he was signed up. Then he was demanded to go back on the other side to the other side. When he arrived, he went on the foot to him back. When he went on the other side, the picture was nice. Angels were floating around, good music playing, Heavenly Father presiding and reigning supreme. Finally, he was asked, what's your choice? Because you are not going to be judged there is no judgment to it. He thought, you know, these bishops and pastors have been telling lies and spoiling the name of the devil. The devil is a very fine man. He looks after his people. Now all these people making noise, saying Satan, Satan, Satan. 
this man is not bad at all. And in, and in any case, heaven seems to be overrated. As a matter of fact, he's a big boy. That was the debate in his head. So when the angel asked him to choose, he said, I have chosen that I will go to hell. Now that I have seen it with my own eyes, it with, I have seen it with my own eyes. And the angel said to him, get into the lift. He got into the lift and he took him down. But when the doors were open, things had changed. Things had changed. The place looked like a desert. His friends were wearing dirty clothes. They were eating from the garbage pit. And the devil was now complete in his devilish rebellion. The tail was out. The horns were out. And he was carrying a whip. So he tiptoed. He tiptoed towards the devil and said, Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. You remember me? Don't you? I was here the other day. You surely remember me. And Lucifer said, Go to hell. I don't remember you. What do you have to say anyway? He said, You know, the other day, things were very nice here, man. Things have changed for the worse today. What's happening? The devil said, I'm sorry, my friend. The day you get, we will come pay him. So therefore, yes. we need to let you know that yes. there is a campaign going on. Yes. And after campaign, yes. you will see the true colors of what is going on. There is a spiritual campaign going on. And if you pass the ballot the wrong place, huh, you're in trouble. Yes. So let us make the right choice in yes. this spiritual campaign. The campaign is on. Yes. The campaign is on. Yes. When politicians are campaigning, they promise you all kinds of things. Yes. When they empower, they give you what yeah, they I'm want. Right on the other side, sometimes when you vote for this party, they look out for you. And the losing party you voted for, they can't do anything for you. So Yahweh can't do anything for you if you vote for Satan. True. But brethren, Yahweh has given us the opportunity to choose. And we have to make the right choices. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 says, This day, I call the heavens and the earth as witness against you. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Now choose life. So that you and your children may live. For the decisions that you will make today is not just for you, but for your children. For your children. Let us be careful. Let us make the right decisions. And let us vote for Yahweh. Because campaign season is on. And during that campaign, you will get all kinds of promises. Every kind of thing will come your way. But are you ready? Is the consequences of where you voted. Are you ready to face brimstone and fire? Are you ready for that? I don't want to taste it. Sometimes it's hard. It's difficult for sure. Let's not try and listen to you and believe you know we all that perfect and strong because you don't do anything on your own. Promotion comes not from the south, west, or east. Yeah, it comes from the north. You can't do anything for yourself. No matter what effort you put, whatever energy you may be put into it, only Yahweh allows. You can't do nothing. We have to make the right decision. But Yahweh made a promise. And he said, I will not leave you, and not forsake you. Yahweh cannot lie. Deuteronomy chapter 31. The sixth encourages. And he said, Be strong and brave. 
Do not fear him, or be afraid of him. For Yahweh your Elohim is he who is going with you. He shall not fail you, nor forsake you. And verse 8 says, And Yahweh is he who is going before you. He himself shall be with you, and shall not fail you, nor forsake you. Do not fear or be afraid. Say to Yahweh, don't be afraid to face the battle. Let us not be afraid. Never give up. Die doing the right thing than leave doing what is wrong. The book of Isaiah says, the borders of hell extends itself daily. You don't have to be in hell. It's a choice. So be careful. Let us choose. Let us make the right choice as young people. Your friends will take you. There will be peer pressure. Yes, there will be peer pressure. Let's be real. There will be peer pressure. But, suddenly, suddenly, we, you will learn new things. Pray, we are ceasing, and the Heavenly Father will do the rest. And in closing, 2 Peter chapter 10, verse 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 to 11 says, Brethren, therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so as entrance will be supplied to you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our sovereign. Let us make our calling and election show. Let us not take a chance to see, but give Yahweh our call. Because the time is still coming and the clock is ticking and time is for no one. We cannot afford to lose salvation. We cannot afford to see you live your entire life on earth. You live your whole life on earth. And when judgment day comes, you go in and burn. And you have the perfect opportunity to make the right decision. Keep in mind, both the young and the old will die. You are not too young to die. Once you born, you will die. If you don't want to die, one born, but you can't prevent yourself from being on this earth. You are not your own. You were born to the price. I thank you. Have a blessed Sabbath and have a wonderful life in Yashua. Hallelujah.